was nervous and excited as I entered the auditorium. It was the first day of organic chemistry, that dreaded course that everyone talks about, separating those who can from those who cannot, the thinning of the herd course. And as I took my seat, 250 other students took their seat. And I looked around the auditorium and I realized that the thinning of this herd might just mean the extinction of my kind. Several weeks later, desperate for a study group, I learned that only five girls entered the auditorium that day, and only three of us would go on to complete the engineering program. If you had asked me when I was little if I wanted to be a teacher, I would have said no. Asking annoying questions, tinkering in the garage with my dad, my passion for nature and science, I didn't attribute these things with being a teacher. Little did I know that later in my life, these two worlds would collide in such a powerful and magnificent way. After spending several years in industry, I could tell that this equity algorithm that I was hoping would be fixed post-college wasn't. Variables were still missing. I wasn't seeing more of myself in my profession, and the profession was not becoming more diverse. My passion was starting to wane. And so instead of having the courage to lead within something that I love, I had the courage to leave and enter into something that I knew very little about. And as I got into the education sector, I realized that it's much easier to influence and change a system when you realize that you are the system. I often hear from people that education is broken. In fact, when I switched from industry to education, everyone said, why? Ugh, what a mess. They weren't wrong. Like any big and complex system, it is a bit messy. But after 22 years of being a teacher, and a principal, a district leader, pioneer in STEM education, and the CEO of a global nonprofit. I'm here to say there is no system that is more redeemable than the one that is foundational to all others. It truly is what unites us in this ability to learn and think, problem solve, and create. Most of us on average will spend nine to 13 years of our life in this sector. It has a tremendous amount of influence. Now, working with schools across the globe, often leaders will ask me, what does school success look like? And I will tell them, right now, school success looks like trying to catch a Yeti. You know it if you see it. If you're lucky enough to have had a sighting, you often can't retrace your steps. And when you try to share your roadmap with others, you end up lost in a blinding snowstorm. But I do think that there are concrete and tangible efforts that we can galvanize together to ensure that school success is not something of myth or legend. Post-pandemic, there is a ton of chatter about this notion of disruption for good and the idea around innovation. Industry is responding to all the problems that, are facing, that we're facing. Yet education has remained fairly silent. We're kind of quietly going back to business as usual. And so given all of this, how do we ensure that the one sector that is foundational to all others, the one system that unites all of us, core to our society, has a very, very strong and large seat at the table of the future? How do we ensure that it has a strong voice in its own evolution? We start by flipping the script. We intentionally design for learning environments where a Latina student can graduate with her high school diploma and her AAS in computer science and walk into a $65,000 a year job at the age of 18 and not be the exception. Where middle schoolers in a Title I school can launch an app to save their local neighborhood trees from an invasive species, an app that will be used in communities across the US. Where high school students are sought out for their expertise in where and how to store helium for future generations, being seen as colleagues in the work and not mere students. We have to start designing for learning systems where educators have autonomy and leadership is distributed. We're taking care of the people within the system. And things like data and information science and even technology are seen as tools of progress and not weapons of hindrance. So how do we do this? And how do we do it well and at scale? We go all in on this notion of partnership by directly intersecting education and community and industry in authentic and, me authentic and meaningful ways. We can begin to fix that broken equity algorithm. 
Recently, the World Economic Forum changed their stance on this and said that the intersection of these three, community, industry, and education, is no longer a hopeful state, but a must-have design for education. If we want to make change, education is at the very core of this. It is the downstream approach. And what if we took this notion of partnership one step further? What if we created a B Corp for education? Lovingly, we call it the DCERT, a first of its kind certification and disruption, spanning across four critical industry practices innovation, inclusion, workforce development, and well being. The disruption certification is a roadmap so that we're no longer lost in a blinding snowstorm. It's a strategy to upskill educational talent. It's also this investment framework so that industry and philanthropy actually know what the return is on their investment, and they're no longer scattering dollars across the landscape hoping that it's working. And finally, it is an equity-centered approach so that we stop dosing universal prescription in learning, and we actually have responsive systems and methodologies for the students and their needs and their families in front of us in the moment. Let me give you an example. It was a chilly winter day, and a group of adults came into a room, laptops in hand, and they were there to make a presentation, to pitch, to win a bid for their company. Several weeks prior, this group of stakeholders who would be hearing their presentations had mapped their community and realized that they didn't live in a healthy and thriving community by standards. In fact, they resided in a food desert, a recreation desert, and did not have access to high-quality medical care. Working alongside industry experts, this group of stakeholders tackled each of these problems coming up with viable solutions. One of those solutions being bringing in a mobile medical care unit to the community a few times a month. And on that particular chilly winter day, as these adults came in the room and got their presentations ready to go, they didn't walk into a typical boardroom or conference room. They came into a room where the tables were low, chairs are small, crayons and picture books scattered about. It was not the adults in the room that day that would make any type of decision, but five-year-olds. Kindergartners would decide who was worthy of serving their community. And as their little hand shot up in there and they said, do you speak Spanish? Will you take good care of my grandma? Do you know a lot about diabetes? Because that's important to my dad. They forever changed the face of their community. The power lies within them. Seven years later, a mobile medical care unit still shows up in this community to provide services. They did that. So you can see within this small example that I share, the four dimensions are alive and well. Student voice and choice is very apparent. It's an inclusive process. Everyone is welcome. Workforce development is happening because we know students cannot be what they cannot see, and when students work alongside experts in industry, no doors are closed to them. Innovation is also taking place because students apply a beginner's mindset, a naive stance to rich and complex problems, coming up with oftentimes the most beautiful and simple solutions that can be marketed. They can start their own companies, their own nonprofits. And finally, the entire experience was built on well-being. The entire experience was built on making their community a healthier and safer place for their families. I like to say within the DCERT that you come as you are, that it doesn't matter what the identity is of your school or your organization, partnership is possible. Working with schools across the globe in this effort, we have seen schools of any type of identity be able to boost their competitive differentiation. We've seen them be able to attract and retain and engage talent like never before. We've seen them be able to protect their mission and their purpose, creating a sustainable plan and so that their work and their ideas almost become leadership proof and they're no longer kind of blowing in the wind like we tend to do in education, watching the pendulum swing back and forth. The DCERT is a space within the messiness and the chaos to start to answer the question, what is school for? How do we do this great reset? How do we create places, schools, learning environments that are full of economic opportunity and not academic disadvantage? Hubs of creativity and entrepreneurialism, generators of wealth, 
where it no longer matters what your zip code is and what your outcome will be. Having straddled industry and education for most of my career, I learned early on that they needed a translator. They didn't know really how to well, work well together. Industry didn't know how to get behind the walls of education, and education needed to have more porous boundaries so the industry truly could come in and co-teach and co-lead and co-design. And I like to say that the disruption certification is that translation mechanism. It's truly the way that they can work together. We can work together. And finally, I'd like to share that within the DCERT, education provides the what. It's what we're good at. Industry provides the why. And together, we provide the how. So the next time you're thinking about your own children's education or your neighbor is grumpy with the education system, think about how you can become part of that system. Think about what it would be to share your story and your professional journey with eight-year-olds. What it would be like to bring a rich and meaty problem to a group of middle schoolers to solve. How could you build a pathway or a bridge from your profession down into high school? And what would it be like if your experience in education, if you had been part of an organization that was a certified disruptor, or if you, in fact, had been one of those five-year-olds? So I implore all of you to have the courage to lead so that our students don't have to leave something that they love because they don't see themselves within it. And maybe, just maybe, if we do it really, really well together, the only thing that will remain extinct is that Yeti. Thank you.